Mr. Richard Frederick. Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just echo the sentiments of my colleague, Minister Baptist from Antigua. Uh, my name is Richard Frederick from St. Lucia. Uh, indeed, I wish to thank the host country, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, for accepting us, having us here, and showing us uh, what it was all about in terms of, you know, giving us proper hosting, and of course, UNESCO. I think bringing all of us from across the region here underscores the need for us to have a collaborative effort as we all in the small island developing states essentially suffer um, the same fate and uh, we are confronted with the same issues and we believe that collaboration can help us deal with issues of climate change in a very efficient and effective manner. Thank you. Minister Nigel Carty. Thank you very much. Good evening all. Just want to say on behalf of government and people of St. Kitts and Nevis, how pleased we were and honored we were to host this meeting here in St. Kitts and Nevis on the very important issue of climate change. I want to use this opportunity as well to say thanks to the hardworking team who worked with me and um, Dr. Narain to ensure that this was in the end successful. And I think at the end of the day, we have conclusions that we can show to the world that we really did do some work during these past two days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Cardi. Uh, Dr. Hepburn? Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Davidson Hepburn. I am the president of the General Conference of UNESCO, and I'm indeed very, very pleased to be here for two reasons. I come from a small developing country, the Bahamas, and uh, I represent 193 countries, and it's a great honor for me to uh, represent this region. I'm indeed proud of the work that, that, that has been done in order to put this together, and I'm very thankful to the Assistant Director General of uh, UNESCO and Social uh, Human Sciences for uh, asking me to participate in this. But I want to give the greatest credit to the National Commission uh, of uh, St. Kitts, but I think what we fail to realize many times, as far as UNESCO is concerned, that the national commissions are the, are the, the, the vehicle that moves UNESCO. And I thank all the hard work that the national commissions have done. And I'm looking forward to working with the national commissions, particularly on the small island developing states, in terms of uh, creating the kind of atmosphere that we, we hope to develop in this region. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hepburn. Now, uh, Mr. Crowley. Thank you. I come last and least on a very eminent table, so mm -hmm. I, I, I should be very brief. It was, it was a great pleasure to be here, and thank you for the hospitality. Um, I've been impressed by two things, one good and one bad, as, as the joke would have it. Um, impressed, first of all, by the challenges that the Caribbean faces, faces uh, with respect to climate change but impressed also by the commitment shown to addressing those challenges in uh, dynamic, uh, innovative, and cooperative ways. And in that respect, I think this meeting offers a message of hope in the face of what is, after all, one of the most serious challenges that humanity faces. Thank you. Climate change is happening now. We're experiencing it now. Just go outside this hotel and look down at the hills down there. See where they're parched, the fur hills around here. That's an effect of climate change. And if tomorrow you have a big flood in St. Kitts, that those hills will wash down a landslide. Because the sun is parching the soil so much every day that it's becoming loose. That's climate change. When you lose coastline and you can go around some part of St. Kitts and see you're losing coastline as you go along, that's climate change. This climate change. We know what trees does for, 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 for us. It filters the air that we breathe every day. It prevents us from getting certain diseases. And when there's no plants, no trees on the hillside, everything passes down, come down to people. Climate change is real. So we're not waiting for generations to come to experience climate change. Let me just say this. 
like we have a national pledge, like we have a national anthem, like we have the colors of our national flags, I believe climate change is so important because it threatens our survival. It should be essentially instilled in the minds of children from a very early age. And you speak to them in a language that they understand. Don't tell a child about climate change. Ask a child to do a th something in a certain manner and have, it, have them to, to become acculturated with a mechanism or a mode of doing things that lends itself to observing the effect of climate change. And that is how you do it. It has to be instilled in the minds of people in a language they understand. There is an alliance of small island states it's called AOSIS, which Grenada now chairs, which has been very much in the forefront of raising the issue before the world as it relates to the plight faced by small island states in the Caribbean, in the Pacific. Um, so it, and it didn't happen just two years ago. It's been ongoing. And it continues to be ongoing. And we've been raising this issue and shouting very loud as to what's taking place and seeing that as a real and present danger to all of us. Now, what we did here today in dealing with UNESCO is dealing with the education component ensuring that the research is broken down in such a way that the common man on the ground can understand. Because a lot of persons, um, a, lot, a lot of persons know about it, have spoken about it, but how has that information, has that information gotten down to the common man? I mean, at the end of the day, you must understand that most of the Eastern Caribbean countries have coastal settlements. And um, the average person would not be in a position to translate how, by how much the, the sea would rise if the temperature were to increase by 10 degrees or 15 degrees. The sad reality, as I just said, all that information is available, but the research and donor agencies stop it there. They do the research, the information becomes available. Obviously, we as a citizenry, we do things in a manner that may negate the effects of climate change. So that technocrats are, de are deliberating and on the one end, but the majority of the population are doing things in a manner that do not lend themselves to essentially fostering or furthering what the technocrats want to do. So I would say that it is not lack of political will, it is lack of resources to get the information acquired from the research. Um, dispense with it, like I said, to use that term again, in a language that people understand. Because every culture is different, persons understand things differently, and if you were to come and tell somebody climate change and this and that, carbon emissions, they don't want to hear that. But if you tell somebody, if you continue driving five cars out of one house every day to work, one day we might not have somewhere to drive. In other words, all five of you jump into one car. Carpooling is a term people understand, but they may not be able to understand the technological aspect of the justice that they are doing to the environment by carpooling. And that is what I mean by language in which they understand. And that is the thing that we have been stressing. Now, if you read a communique, you realize the very first thing that is written there is to applaud the collaborative effort of, of UNESCO and St. Kitts National Commission for UNESCO in organizing this timely and constructive conference to facilitate what? Information sharing and seeking to reach a, the, the preliminary consensus surrounding climate change and related ethical principles. Information sharing. We want to see that, that, that has been in research all the time come down to the place where every man on the ground would understand that information and act accordingly. So, so this is what was the primary purpose for us being here and for us dealing with some of these issues. And we've come to a consensus and we are gonna hold UNESCO to, to the truth to make sure that there is that breakdown so that we could have much more on the ground work. Uh, there, there, there's been a lot, a lot, a lot of technical data flying around, but how do we get it on the ground? 
And this is why we, when we speak about this, this, this conference being a success, is that we, we are able to deal with trash or some issues and come up with, with, with this com communication so that we can find a road to move forward and move forward well so that all can benefit from what we have been trying to do. And two years ago, the entire world, the Caribbean also, signed on to all the, 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 the treaties for climate change. So we are part of that. What we're doing here today and yesterday is UNESCO is a United Nations organization. Am I right? Mm -hmm. UNESCO is doing certain work. So what all we're doing is to make sure that UNESCO, OECS, and all of the other agencies in the Caribbean work together. So we have a common front going forward. And education is one of these things. Um, very importantly as well, particularly when we talk about resources, we have to begin to make resources available to help our young people to move to higher level education so that they can come back with the capacity to conduct the same kinds of consultancies that we talk about and to help to educate our people in a more precise way and in a way that is more relevant to our needs at home. Now, I said in a meeting today, and I want to tell you this, that I'm a politician. My life is short. Five years. After five years, I have to go back to the polls. And there's no guarantee I'll come back here as minister. So I want result now. So it can't be 20 years from now we're getting training done. As a matter of fact, I'm going back to Antigua. In my environment division, Development Control Authority, land, housing, all under my ministry, will have to start to put together some publicity stunt to begin to sensitize persons out there in Antigua and Barbuda about the environment. We're doing that. Um, all the work that's been done in the last several years on climate change and uh, I think the scientists are waiting for some facts and figures but things change so much and they cannot wait, I, I don't think they can wait to have all the answers to begin to educate people as to the danger and the problems that climate change brings to all of us. A lot of monies are being spent by the donor and research agencies on research and research information is meant to inform the masses as to behavioral conduct that would assist us in the quest at mitigating or adapting to climate change. Um, loads of money, like I said, are spent on, on research, but nothing is spent on education. And I believe it is now time for the research agencies and the donor agencies to go back to the drawing board and to leave a significant amount of money, um, a significant amount of money that may be proportionate to that spent on research for implementation of the information derived from the research. And these are the kind of things that we want to see change. So that if you spend money on consultancies to get some answers, what are you doing with that? And is it really for consultancies? Because if you have an 80-20 consultancy fee as, a as opposed to what is actually being done, then to me you're wasting the time. You should have a 20-80, 80% 80, 80 being that which is on the ground, that which educates persons, that which causes the, 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 the sharing of information so that the, the, the people on the ground, the, 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 the masses of the people will understand what needs to be done to change behavior so that we can mitigate against the problems. Um, the way it is, has been structured in the past, the way it is structured even on, on to, up to now, is, is seriously lacking. And I, I, um, we are hoping that coming out of that and having shared with UNESCO that we, we would see some changes here so that our people would be able to better appreciate what is being done and better be able to mitigate against the problems that is facing our world. And I think that the second question ties very well with the first uh, because the question of resources really asks how do we use these resources to educate people and to do a host of things. And I think the minister who spoke before me is quite right um, about how we use the resources to 
conduct consultancies and to do real things on the ground which affect the lives of people. Um, education is going to be a challenge and apart from the simple sensitization of the public, I think we have to have embedded in our curricula, primary school, secondary school, um, and beyond, uh, a real system of making sure that all people understand the impact and understand how they can change their behavior and understand how the behavior of people in other parts of the world could affect their own livelihood and the ability to inhabit our small countries. If it is not implemented, it remains an exercise in futility because some of those changes may just necessitate um, you know, a change in cultural habits. And we have, we have enough information now, I believe, for that to happen. One of the resolutions that we have come up with is that we'll start the education now. We'll start the education process now. I have I've spoken with the, the OECS, um, with, uh, and we've asked them to collaborate with all the agencies in the, age, in the area and to begin the education process now in schools, primary, uh, even kindergarten, start the education process. I expect the next few months to see on our television, our weekly daily news article on climate change. I've seen some pictures in there yesterday and today, some visual. If you see them, you'll be amazed as to what's happening in the world or in the region itself. And if you can put those images on television screens to show people of the entire region what's happening. I think we will begin to get serious about climate change and its effects on our lives. And so I can assure you, something is happening. Ian Richards, St. Kitts and Davis Information Service. Um, following up on, on what I've heard from the ministers of government then, and of course this communique and the conference itself was to be a Caribbean conference. Um, could you give me your impression of the attendance of member colleagues, um, ministers of environment uh, from throughout the region. How do you feel about that? And also, with regard to education, Dr. Hepburn, during the opening, you mentioned that there was to be a conference held on climate change and education, um, climate, yeah, and education in the Bahamas. Could you tell us a bit more about that and its objective? And also, um, is there any work that will be done to target vulnerable groups um, around the region in terms of addressing them in terms of climate change? I think one of the greatest successes of uh, what this is all about would, would tend to show the, the enthusiasm and the interest that the ministers have shown from the OECS states. I have gone to hundreds of these uh, conferences and we talk about the things that we can do and what we'll do all the time. But I think this, is, this was one of the first times that I heard such impassioned view about what we need to do as far as climate change. Now, let me say climate change has become a buzzword. Everybody's using it. And you mentioned the word priority, and that's what I would like to, to talk about. One of the items we discussed uh, with a great deal of debate going back and forth was the inclusion of um, the idea of gender-based treatment of the issue of climate change. And after discussing the issue back and forth, we agreed, um, and this comes back to the kind of success we're talking about when we address the success of the meeting, because in my view, um, part of the success of the meeting was to get the right set of people together to be able to 